Hey guys, Matthew here, and today I want to bring you guys a comprehensive guide on how to sustain your maps, but also how to be able to farm one specific map uh, of your choice, and that can be of any given tiers. So let's talk about actually how to go up in tier on your mapping, uh, how to inc like increase your map tier, and how to sustain your maps for every single uh, category of maps. So let's just start with white maps. Now, I don't see the reason to ever not use aux on a map. It increases the pack size, the quantity, the quality, etc., uh, and the currency that you're going to make, the amount of rare items and unique items that are going to drop, everything is better when you alka map. There is no reason to ever transmute a map unless you're playing hardcore and your build sucks or something like that. Really, even T1 maps in any league, I will actually alkor because I want to go up in tiers as fast as possible. There's no reason not to. That's how I go about white maps. I can go any of them, any mod that I can roll. If I can't run the mod, so reflect or something, I'll just alk or I'll just scour. I'll again ready to go. That's it. Now let's talk about yellow maps. Yellow maps, you'll use one additional currency orb and that is going to be the Val Orb, which is also very cheap. Um, so there's a couple different outcomes that can happen when you Val a map. One of them is that your map goes up in tier. So let's say you Val a T6, it becomes a T7. Another outcome is that it becomes an eight mod map. Now it becomes, if it becomes an eight mod map, it is going to have significantly more juice quantity and rarity and all that, which means more currency, more items, therefore, uh, there's nothing there that you don't want to happen, and more monsters also means more chance of dropping maps. Because that's pretty much the only modifier to your map drops is the amount of monsters on your actual map when it comes to uh, lower end mapping without the uses of things like chisels. So that's what I do with my yellow maps. Alk, Val, that's it. And that's how I get to red maps incredibly, incredibly fast uh every single league because i never have any issues with either sustaining or going up in tiers consistently uh pretty much normally every few maps every four or five maps i'm already up in tiers every four or five maps i'm up in tiers i typically reach t16s and i have around 50 ish atlas completion because of the leapfrog strategy which is a byproduct obviously it has very little atlas completion but you can always go back and complete those maps later or complete them at a higher tier that's up to you now let's talk about red maps. It's actually not that hard to sustain and go up in red maps. You just really need to not be greedy and buy chisels and use chisels. Uh, any league, I will start using chisels as soon as I reach red maps. So same thing, chisels, alk, val. I'm not even gonna try to reroll these maps into very juicy maps. I'm not gonna use sextants. I'm not gonna use scarabs, uh, uh, prophecies, anything like that. None of that is necessary to sustain and to go up in tiers when it comes to red maps. Those things are necessary when you actually start juicing your map in order to make more currency. But that's not something you want to care about until you get to that point. So in the early red maps, Chisel, Alk, Val, you're good to go. Now let's talk about sustaining those higher tier maps, those T16s, right? Those T16s are a little bit more pesky to actually sustain. Those will require not a whole lot more, but at the very least, use a couple of sextants. You know, just slap on sextants uh on every single one of your watchstones so if you're trying to sustain t16s that would be four of them and then keep anything that adds monsters to your map so ink uh, adds monsters that deal fire damage lightning damage that heal that convert when you're killed all of those are good and you don't have to use the higher tier sextant you can literally just use si simple sextants they're very cheap and they are worth using because the amount of monsters that they add to your map is pretty significant especially with those those packs additionally on every single sextant. So if it's five packs or four packs times four, that's a lot more monsters on your map. That's it. You don't have to use uh, scarabs. You don't have to use sacrifice fragments or anything like that. You don't need prophecies either. You don't need any of that when it comes to sustaining red tier maps, even for T16s. But one thing that you will need is a higher Atlas bonus. Uh, so I would highly recommend whenever you get to those T16 maps and you're trying to think about, you know, farming those T16s, you will want to have 100% Atlas completion and above. Uh, so what that means is that every single map that drops from those monsters will be one tier higher than they were so supposed to be. So your T14 becomes T15s, your T15s become T16s, and your T16s stay T16s. It, mel it makes sustaining uh, your T16s really 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 easy so highly recommend having 100 percent. but in terms of investment that is it you don't need any more than that in order to sustain those now let's talk about how to actually go ahead and farm one specific map uh on your atlas uh 
So the first thing you want to do is check the tier of the map you're trying to farm. So for this example, I'd be using Burial Chambers, which is a natural T60 in this league. So I'll type in the map tier under my highlight maps right there, tier colon 16, and then it shows me a Burial Chambers. You'll see that I have um, some blinking lights for every single T16. Now, the first thing I want to do for this is to make sure that there is no other blinking lights anywhere else on my Atlas. Now, a lot of people would tend to think that if this happened on their Atlas right now, that their Atlas is bricked, right? There's some blinking lights in Leroy Thane. There's no way they'll ever, they'll ever sustain their burial chambers. Well, that's just false. Because the way the Atlas actually works is that if a map is not visibly shown, it cannot drop. And if a map is visibly shown at a lower tier that you actually completed it, it's still going to drop at that lower tier. What you see is what you get, quite literally. So, the easiest way to fix an atlas that would look like this is to just remove one watchstone from my zone, uh, which is not the one that I'm trying to work on with my preferred map. So now you see that this lighthouse and this mausoleums have went down in tiers to T14 and T13 respectively, which means they are no longer a threat to my sustaining of my burial, uh, burial chambers T16 map. They can no longer drop. So. Now the thing is, if you had your completed Atlas at Awakening Level 8 and you were to remove one watch zone in each of the zones to make sure you have no other T16s anywhere else, you'd, I think, be at Awakening Level 6. Now Awakening Level 6 does have less bonuses than Awakening Level 8, but that's just a consequence of farming one specific map and there's nothing you can do about that. Fortunately for you, if you're somebody who actually likes to farm Cyrus, there is advantages to farming Cyrus at a higher Awakening level. So let's say I was I go about this and I'm doing my watchstones right now and I kill my four conquerors. My awakening level is only level four. I want to kill Cyrus at awakening level eight or as high as I'm able to do. The easiest way to do that uh, is to basically cheese your atlas with either the unique watchstones from Cyrus or even the Maven, the Maven watchstones as well will also work to get it to awakening level eight because the way that this actual mechanic works is that the awakening level is snapshotted from your atlas Whenever you talk to Xana and you open the actual Cyrus, uh, portal to Cyrus. So even if I complete all my maps and I'm mapping my T16s at Awakening Level 4, I can still farm Awakening Level 8 if I'm careful of putting in all my watchstones before I go ahead and open up the portal to Cyrus. If I do that, and then after that I can go ahead and remove all those watchstones uh, and uh, be it the cheesed ones or the actual atlas ones it doesn't really matter my awakening but bonus is going to go back down and no longer any threats to sustaining my burials really good there now let's talk about something else uh, which is a little bit counterintuitive you might think that for example here we have burials in beach that are right next to each other both t16s and both natural yellow maps so you might think that it's a good idea to not complete beach as it's going to increase my odds of sustaining burial chambers but it's actually quite the opposite the algorithm when it comes to dropping maps on the atlas is going to prioritize maps that are not completed adjacent to whatever map you're running so if i was running burial chambers and my beach was not completed the algorithm would prioritize dropping beach because the algorithm is trying to increase my atlas completion as high as possible as fast as possible and that is to come and help especially for the solo cell phone players so good good job ggg when it comes to that but for the people who aren't playing SSF and who want to sustain one specific map, it's a bit annoying because we are basically introducing maps that we don't want to be dropping uh, part of our map pool uh, from the one map that we want to run. So for my example, Burial Chambers. Now, the best way to actually get around this is going to be to use the mechanic that was introduced, I believe, with Conquerors of the Atlas, which is the favorite uh, map mechanic. The, the favorite slots are very easy to unlock. You'll see that for the first one, you basically need to complete all the maps in the one region. So if I was trying to do, for example, Lexajorus, I would just have to complete one of these maps without the bonus objective, without any given tiers, it doesn't matter. So long as I run one of each of these maps, they'll be counted as completed as long as they're on my Atlas and visibly seen. Uh, and therefore, I'll have my first unlocked uh, favorite map. The next one you'll have to do the same thing but this time you'll have to do the actual bonus objective which is going to be to kill the mob uh, the monster sorry the the boss monster at either a uh, magic rare or corrupted rare uh for white maps blue maps and of course uh yellow maps respectively uh and that is pretty much or sorry white maps yellow maps and red maps respectively and that is going to give you the second 
favorite mechanic. Now, the third one is the most annoying one to get because it does require you to have all these watchstones. Like I said earlier, you can actually cheese that using unique watchstones or maven watchstones. But even I don't have it, and I'm having no problem whatsoever when it comes to sustaining my burials. As you can see, I don't run any other T16 maps ever, and I don't sell them either. And the one map that I have the most of is my burial chambers, despite the fact that this is pretty much the only map I've been running for days now. Um, so only two goes a long way. Even one does have some somewhat of an effect. Three is obviously going to be the best, but it is not necessary, especially in the early stage of a league, if you're just trying to get some little currency rolling so you can like afford your headhunter or whatever you're trying to buy, um, mapping su supplies, etc., etc. And that pretty much concludes uh, exactly how I go about sustaining one specific map and how I go about increasing my, uh, my tier of maps that I'm actually running as I'm going through my atlas on any single league start. I do the exact same thing. And it works out great. I'm typically in red maps by about 12 hours into a league. Uh, and I get to my T16s on easily on the first day. So, yep, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Before I go, though, I want to say a huge thank you to my supporters. Kluzi, Lero, uh, Gaikona, JW Player, Scott, Justin, Alex, Ollie, Matt, Kevin, Bit, Axel, and Hayden. And if your name isn't on there and you've uh, subbed to my patron, there's been a lot lately. So thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, but I've been super, super busy, but I'll be up, uh, updating that uh, in the following days. So uh, thank you guys very much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.